Hiya, Top Tip Tuesday time again. It's Bob here. Hello. So on today's video, we're going to be jumping back into Nexus. So we're looking at GPU sims here. And I'm going to show you how you can use NX constraints in the forces mode to create these really cool attraction and repulsion forces, which can give us some nice organic looking particle simulations. So let's start that clock and we'll begin. In our scene, we have this emitter with these static particles being emitted in a grid. Let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Nexus, and bring in an NX constraints. And we're going to add some forces constraints. Now, these are attraction and repulsion forces which attract and repel particles to one another. So if we hit play just in the default settings, you can see immediately that's happening and we're getting this quite frenetic simulation. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty strong, so let's just reduce that attraction force. Look, we've got our attraction force settings here, default on 10, let's put it on 1%. We've got our repulsion force settings, let's put that down to 1%. And now this won't be quite so uh, frenetic, that looks pretty good. This is going to look better if our particles don't intersect so let's do a collisions layer as well we'll go to the add constraint and we'll add a collisions i'm just going to bump this weight way up to say 500 just to make sure we don't have any uh, bad collisions or intersections so now we can see yes look our forces are working and what is happening is we are saying that we've got both attraction forces and we have repulsion forces and we're saying that any one particle can attract and repel up to 16 other particles we don't need that many let's put it just down to five um, now the attraction force comes into effect um, with, with any particles that are within a, rad a radius of 20 centimeters and the repulsion force pushing them away comes into effect when they're within a radius of 10 centimeters so with the repulsion slightly smaller distance wise than the attraction it means that particles can be attracted in but then they're pushed away and this push and pull gives us this really nice kind of organic motion which makes it feel like this group of particles has kind of a life of its own so let's just um, do a few more things what if we were able to say the smaller particles should be repelled more strongly than the bigger ones? Well, let's do that. We can do it with a mapping. So we'll go to the mapping tab. We're going to add a radius map. Now, these particles are anywhere between 0 and 4 centimeters. So let's put that in our range min and max, 0 to 4. The category that we want to map are we're using forces constraints. Let's put force. The parameter we want to map is the repulsion. Let's do the repulsion radius. And what we want to say is the smaller particles, if we put this not up to full, it's saying small particles have full radius and the larger particles have a smaller radius. And we're talking about this repulsion radius here. So something like that's looking good. So if we hit play, we might not see anything just yet. But if we go to our object tab and just to start increasing this amount, we should start seeing that, yeah, look, the smaller particles are steering clear and, and, and keeping towards the outer part of our blob of particles. Let's put that even more. Now, because we've increased this radius greater than the attraction radius, particles are able to escape. So let's put that attraction radius up just a bit further. But now we should have uh, the smaller particles staying towards the outside of this group. And the more connections we have in the limit, the more that's likely to happen. Yep, look, we can see the larger particles congregating in the middle and the smaller ones staying on the outside. Excellent. So obviously there's loads of different things you can do with that. You can push and pull those to get whatever look uh, that you desire. But now that we've got this movement, let's start adding some more modifiers. So if we activate this attract modifier, the attract modifier is using this null as the attract object here. So let's hit play. And now you'll see that, look, they're being attracted towards that null. And we've got this really nice kind of ball of particles that are getting a bit of a life of their own. Now, 
we want our smaller particles a bit on the outside. So let's go back to the constraints, forces. Let's increase that repulsion force a bit till we start getting them really pushing out onto the outside. Yeah, look, you can see those little ones being pushed right out to the outer extremities of our group of particles. So that's looking very cool. Okay, now let's add something else. We could add a turbulence. We'll go particles, nexus. Let's bring in a turbulence. Let's make this Voronoise, which is my current favorite turbulence. Let's bump that way up. And let's just say, we'll do a mapping as well. Let's map this to the particle radius again, zero to four. And we want the little ones to get full strength and the bigger ones to have less turbulent strength. Let's have a look. And now we've got a really kind of wild simulation going on. Now this is looking good, but let's say we wanted just to calm it down a little bit. What we could do is we could add another constraint. Let's go to the constraints, object tab. We could add a friction layer, which will just calm this down a bit. Uh, we don't need so many in the connection limit. Let's put it down to say eight. We'll reduce the strength of that friction a bit. This is just gonna really calm down the interaction of those particles perhaps a bit much let's reduce that down there we go so there we have created this really kind of organic looking flocking of particles and we could move this around for pretty cool and easy to set up frenetic chaotic particle sims